Alright guys, the deals have started to go through in the Championship and we are here today to digest even more transfer rumours which have been going around the league recently. Loads to talk through in today's video as well as any transfer rumours that you've seen. Do leave down below your thoughts on the FA Cup. Had all that drama going on over the weekend as well as a few quite juicy ties to look forward to in the next round. Mike Cy Preston up against Spurs for example. Can't wait for that one. But before we jump into any transfer rumours, let's first of all go over some of the done deals. So in the end of we saw Middlesbrough complete a season-long loan deal for Aston Villa striker Cameron Archer. We spoke about this one in the last video, by which point it was already pretty much a done deal, but it has since been confirmed. Had a cameo off from the bench in their FA Cup game against Brighton over the weekend. Hull City completed a loan deal for Aaron Connolly for the season. Still yet to be convinced with Connolly. Didn't quite do it in his last loan spell at Middlesbrough. Had a loan spell out in Italy in the first half of this season that it didn't quite click for him, so he's got a real point to prove now at Hull. Coventry have gone ahead and signed Brook Norton Cruffy on loan for the rest of the season from Arsenal. He obviously spent the first half of the season on loan with Rotherham, where I thought he was quite a solid performer for them, actually. Recent weeks, he was sort of in and out of that side as they've been rotating that position, and so Arsenal made the choice to recall him and send him out to Coventry, and I think that could be quite a beneficial relationship for both the club and player, especially with the way that Coventry play with their wing-backs. Wigan Athletic have gone ahead and lost Graham Shinny for the remainder of the season. He's headed to Aberdeen on loan for the remainder of the year. I do think that one's quite the blow for Wigan. Already thought they were looking a little bit light for quality and a little bit of bite to midfield, and I feel like Shinny was a player who added that. And another blow to the front end of the pitch for Wigan. They've seen Nathan Broadhead being recalled by Everton, and he now seems to be on the verge of a move to Ipswich Town. Seems to be big money that Ipswich um, are paying to go ahead and get that deal over the line. Scored five goals for Wigan in the Championship. Their second top scorer, uh, just behind Will Keane, and once again leaves another hole in that squad, which is going to need to be filled. We also saw Blackpool completing the loan deal for Morgan Rogers coming on loan from Manchester City for the remainder of the season. Decent deal once again for Blackpool. Michael Appleton always seems to have a few links when it comes to the loan market. Played that uh, market fairly well so far this season. I especially think for Blackpool, whose system sort of requires natural wingers, someone like Rogers will be a really useful fit for the rest of the season. And as will Josh Bowler. This one was pretty much over land the last time we did the transfer room around the video but it has since been confirmed Blackpool have got this one over the line for the remainder of the season obviously a fantastic result for Blackpool in the FA Cup as well beating Bowler's parent club Forest in quite emphatic style in the FA Cup but with that signature gives Blackpool survival chances a massive boost. And we saw Birmingham completing the signing of experienced Burnley centre half Kevin Long to add a little bit more into their back line his first team opportunities at Burnley over the last few years have been really quite limited actually so he'll be looking to play a bit more football at Birmingham I'm sure. And we also had Huddersfield Town completing the loan signing of Matt Lowton coming on loan for the remainder of the season. Got to see him at Deepdale over the weekend. Uh, did make his debut for Huddersfield. 33 years old, another player who will look to add a little bit more experience into that side. But those are some of the done deals that we've seen going through in the Championship over the past few days. Now without any further ado, let's hop into the rumours. So we'll start out with the Brereton Diaz news and that's that Blackburn reportedly aren't willing to budge on their 15 million valuation of the player if they were to sell him in the January window. Now, the difficulty Blackburn face with the Brereton situation at the moment is that he is out of contract at the end of the season. On the flip scale of that, they're also third in the league at the moment, and should they sell him in this window, that massively the league goes ahead and dents their chances of finishing in the top six this season. And even with how inconsistent Blackburn have been throughout the season so far, I think the higher-ups there have to sense an opportunity that is there to be taken with how inconsistent pretty much every other team has has been in and around the top six. He's their top scorer so far this season. He's got nine goals and four assists in the championship, although goals for him have somewhat dried up recently. Um, I think he's gone eight games now without scoring um, after not hitting the back of the net in that FA Cup game, but there's no doubt that he would leave a massive void in that side if he was to be sold, and I don't think I'd be backing them for the top six if they did let him go. The difficulty is if they don't make the top six anyway and then they lose him for a free in the summer, that's sort of the double whammy in that situation but it seems as if Blackburn are willing to go ahead and take that risk because by valuing him at 15 million with only six months left in his contract that's pretty much Blackburn saying he's not for sale. 
And it looks as if Preston have now switched their attention to young Everton striker Tom Cannon. Going off Ryan Lowe's comments throughout January so far, it does seem that Preston will be working with exclusively loan deals in the January transfer window. And yeah, a striker is absolutely a priority position. We would have loved to have got Archer over the line, but in the end, he chose Middlesbrough instead. Tom Cannon would be an interesting one. Uh, highly rated within the Everton youth setup for the under-21 so far this season. He's got an excellent record. In the Premier League 2, he scored 7 goals in 11 matches. In the Football League Trophy, he's got 5 in 5. So, certainly has something about him. And at 20 years old now, you'd imagine that next stage of his development would be a low move out. Sheffield Wednesday, another club who were interested. But it seems, as of recording right now, that Preston are leading the race. An interesting one I saw was linking Harry Toffolo with a loan move to Wigan Athletic. Jack Colback, another player from Forest, who was also being dis uh, discussed by Wigan. Now, Toffolo obviously made that move over from Huddersfield to Forest um, in the summer transfer window, and his game time has been a little bit more limited recently with Renan Lodi coming into the starting 11 in his place. From Toffolo's perspective, I do think that if Forest were to make him available for a loan transfer, you know, with no disrespect to Wigan, I'd imagine that teams further up the championship food chain right now would be interested in a move for him. So, yeah, not totally sure on the validity of that one at the moment, but we have seen similar moves come off in the past. And another Forest player who has been linked out with a low move to the Championship has been Lewis O'Brien, another one who made that switch over from Huddersfield to Forest in the summer. Still, I think, quite highly rated at Forest, but plenty of his minutes more recently, especially in the Premier League, have been coming on from the bench as you know, a bit of a cameo appearance in the second half. Six starts in the Prem, six appearances off the bench. Did get a little bit more time in that FA Cup match, but obviously that that game not going to plan for Forest. I still really highly rate him and maybe as you know a chance to get more first team football in his legs alone move could be beneficial if Forest do have that adequate cover in midfield to the point where they'd be comfortable with letting him go out on loan. But obvious link with West Brom is the fact that Corbran previously worked with him at Huddersfield. The pair obviously had a fantastic time working together and West Brom are looking to bolster that midfield. West Brom, should they get that deal over the I think we'll be looking very strong in that area. And then quite the interesting transfer story, we've got Burnley striker Val Weghorst being linked with a move to Manchester United on loan for the remainder of the season. Now he's currently out on loan with Besiktas, done quite well in the first half of the season, scored 9 goals in 18 matches so far. There were probably some Burnley fans who were hopeful that after the World Cup perhaps a potential recall was in line and that he'd help them, you know, get them over the line in the second half of the season for the Championship, but I think, you know, the way Burnley are going they're strong enough as it is and this one could potentially play into Burnley's hands if he does complete that low move over to Man United for the rest of the season puts him in the spotlight if he scores a few goals for them they can then go ahead you know sell him on for a little bit of a profit perhaps in the summer transfer window and then go ahead and reinvest uh, the funds from that into the rest of the squad so yeah one to keep in mind there but an interesting transfer story nonetheless on last week's episode we spoke about Dan Barley's situation at Rotherham and they have a quite similar situation actually with Ogbeni he's been their top scorer so far this season with six goals and two assists I think he's adapted really well to the level so far however his contract is expiring at the end of the season and as of right now there doesn't seem to be any sort of you know, ongoing or close to negotiations in terms of striking a new deal for him. So January would theoretically present itself as the last opportunity to go ahead and cash in on him. However, in doing so, I think that would massively dent their survival chances. He is their top scorer so far this season. Uh, seven goals in all competitions, two assists along with that as well. And Swansea City are said to be big admirers of the 25-year-old who is fairly versatile, can play in a number of roles, but has obviously been playing that role off the forward line for Rotherham this season and has done so really effectively. And it does seem as if Leeds United youngster Joe Geldhart will get the opportunity to be loaned out to the Championship during the second half of the season. It has been discussed. A few Championship clubs, I'm sure, will be in the market for him. Swansea City, one link I've already seen so far. But should Leeds make him available for a loan like it's expected, they will. I'm sure plenty of others will also be interested. 
And it looks as if Huddersfield Town are in negotiations for a potential loan deal for Anthony Knockout. We could see him returning to the championship. He's currently at Fulham, out on loan in the Greek Super League, playing for Volos, but could be recalled and loaned back out to the championship and to Huddersfield. Now, Huddersfield are in desperate need of some more creativity, some more invention in the final third. Knockout, certainly a player in years gone by who's been, you know, amazingly prolific in the championship. And about five years ago, this would have been an amazing signing, but in 2023, I'm not totally sure. Since making that move over to Fulham, Knockout hasn't really looked like the same player. The last time we saw him in the Championship, for example, didn't put up anywhere near the sort of numbers that we were previously accustomed to seeing from him. You know, that loan spell he had at Nottingham Forest, for example, even his whole stint at Fulham. But it is an interesting transfer link nonetheless. And Burnley are the latest club to be linked to Bristol City. Semenya, we spoke on last time's video about Bournemouth's interest in the Bristol City forward who they themselves are said to value him at around about 12 million. Well Burnley are the latest club who have reportedly entered the race for the young dynamic forward. Burnley one of the few championship clubs who do probably have um, an availability to splash a little bit of cash in the January market. They obviously spent incredibly well in the summer. It does appear as if they are keen on further bolstering their forward line as well by adding another forward. You know we spoke last time about Sam Surridge and their interest in him and someone like a Semenya would be a really interesting addition, another youngster coming into that young core. I expect plenty of championship clubs to be interested in Bournemouth striker Jamal Lowe, who is reportedly being allowed to go out on loan in the January window. The 28-year-old's opportunities have been fairly limited since Bournemouth have been promoted to the Premier League. He's only played 11 minutes of Premier League football so far this season, for example, and so a loan move, at the very least, does make sense. Reportedly so, both Norwich and QPR are currently leading the race for him, although there are plenty of other clubs who will be throwing their hat in the ring. Even I saw Ipswich mentioned with this one but that would be a ridiculous one if they managed to pull him off uh, playing in League One at the moment. His scoring record in the Championship is really good. He's versatile enough so that he can play through the middle as a number nine or off either one of the flanks and would be a real asset for any side going for promotion in the second half of the season. Well guys there we have it that will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in and make sure to leave your thoughts on everything going on in the transfer world down in the comments below. Apart from that guys thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.